Okay, move on. Fun segment, always about the media. Uh, this one, not as much about cable news, but about how stuff works here in DC. So it's about Punchbowl News. Now, to be clear, we actually use a lot of reporting from Punchbowl News. That's actually important. We find that they have some of the best on the ground stuff from Capitol Hill, updates, sources, and more. However, what we have always known is that DC media in particular is deeply intertwined with lobbyists and with corporate power in a way that cable news is even less so. And what I mean by that is that the most important newsletters in Washington, Punchbowl News being one of them, Politico Playbook, Axios AM, are specifically sponsored by the largest corporations on earth because they want their news in order and their ads in order to get in front of congressional staffers, other people who are in media, the players at the top who set regulations. It's one of the most effective ways for them to lobby against stuff is by co-opting the DC media elite. One of the famous uh, uh, times where this was actually called out was when Bernie Sanders did that live stream with the Washington Post, mm. and he, it was sponsored by Bank of America. So it was like, Washington <laughs> was, Post sits down with uh, with Bernie Sanders. He came out, he's like, is this really sponsored by Bank of America? Yeah. And it, it was like, I'm sure the Washington Post people were like freaking out too. Um, but that was a you know the first time that I even saw a politician spot like this. So that's the background. Uh, it matters a lot in terms of setting the way that people view the news, experience the news, and understand what's going on in this city are three very important newsletters, Axios AM, Punchbowl News, and Playbook. Punchbowl is run by Jake Sherman, Anna Palmer, and I'm forgetting the other guy, I think his name is John something. Uh, they are former Playbook employees of Politico, spun off their own company. So let's put this up there on the screen and finally get to it. This is really interesting. So Punchbowl News recently hosted, a on a Sunday afternoon, a Washington football team little meetup in which it was attended by, quote, the American Investment Council, which is the private equity industries trade group, Bruce Andrews of Intel, John Cott, lobbyist of Capital Council, Marissa Mitrovich of Frontier Communications, people from law firms like Mc or consulting firms like McKinsey, Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, Toyota, the National Restaurant Association, American Express, some law firms which represent National Beer Association, J.P. Morgan & Chase, the corporate lobbyists of Business Roundtable, which is the largest lobbying organization for Fortune 500 companies, a TikTok executive, a man that I've actually exposed here on the show before, Blackstone Group, Exxon Mobil. So, a who's who? Uh, together, they probably represent what? over trillions of dollars oh, in market cap. I easy. mean, some of the, uh, uh, that right there is one of the largest sectors of the entire US economy. And what's even more interesting that the prospect dug into is that the seats and the box in which they were hosting the event appears to have been even donated to the group. And of course, you know, this is a, a very influential team here in DC, Dan Snyder, the man who owns the team is a billionaire. And what you're seeing is all kinds of not only co-optation, but direct sponsorship by all of these groups in Punchbowl News, hosting a quote unquote confab between reporters and their actual sponsors is something that other media organizations actually took a long time to try and develop firewalls, if there even is such a thing, yeah. between the sales staff and the people who sponsor them, in this case that barely exists, and David Sirota um, over at the Daily Poster is always just showing you who is sponsoring you know, this week's Punchbowl News. In some cases, it's presented by Pharma, it's presented by Facebook. Something that has irked me personally, Crystal, is that Punchbowl News has gone all over New York media trying to present themselves as some cool newsletter subscription company because they charge a premium subscription um, just like in the way that we do with their product. And they revealed their revenue to the Wall Street Journal. Let's put this up there on the screen where you can actually see, see within there, it's called Journalist Venture Beyond Their Newsroom to try to crash, cash in. Well, what they reveal to the Wall Street Journal is that they've made a million dollars in revenue since the t on $10 million this year. So what I mean by that is that one million of their dollars has come from paid subscriptions, but they made 10 million, which means what? 
that 9 million, aka 90% of their revenue, is coming from corporate ads like Facebook and like Axon yeah. and like Pharma and like private equity. One of the reasons that you and I left the Hill is because, let's be honest, that's how the Hill made money too. It's all about DC, Beltway, insider media who charge premium ad rates to a bunch of people who want to influence lawmakers. And I, I want you to think about that part for a minute. I yeah. think that's really important because we were uncomfortable at the Hill just knowing that was yes. happening at all. And we didn't even have And a, we had nothing, yeah, nothing to, to do, do with do it. With it. Yeah. We all, we didn't even know who was, you know, the sponsors were right. or who was coming in, who right. was average. We didn't even know unless someone wrote us about it and was right. like, hey, did you know you're sponsored by the Amer like American Petroleum yeah. or whatever? I was so pissed off about Yeah, that. and right. so we felt uncomfortable just even knowing that was happening even when we had nothing to do with it. Now imagine how just flagrantly corrupt it is to have the same people who are doing the quote-unquote journalism having buddy-buddy relationships, hanging out at a football mm -hmm. game, taking pictures together, and this total intertwining of the content and the journalism and the editorial decision-making with the corporate advertising. As you said, this is way worse than cable news because, again, at cable news, there's one department that is buying and selling ads, you know, that's dealing with the, the corporate people and having that whole engagement. Right. And then the anchors are not, they're not involved with that. So, and they're same thing. They don't really know, you know, oftentimes exactly who's, um, who's advertising or sponsoring during their hours, et cetera, and it's ever changing. So there's at least some, some lines there. There's some distance mm -hmm. between the content and the editorial and the advertising here, I mean, there's just, there's nothing. And you see on the newsletter, you see who it's paid for by, you see the way they're directly, overtly um, courting these individuals. And yeah, I mean, this is part of the direction that the media landscape is going in because do I think that Punchbowl is going to pay any price no, yeah, for so. this type they're of just doing business as usual. blatant right. corruption? No, it's just all totally out in the open, and I don't think they'll pay a price for it. I don't think they'll be you know, pushed down a polite society. I don't think Jake Sherman will get any fewer CNN no. um, hits. MSNBCs. Oh, is he MSNBC? at MSNBC? Yes, yes. You can see how much I watch cable right. news. Um, yeah, it's not. I mean, they're not going to have a problem with it. So it just shows you this will become the new norm because it's highly profitable for these people. I do want to say about the Washington football team and Dan Snyder mm. that um, he is total trash and has absolutely driven a once proud team into the ground. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about, about football. Grew up as a Redskins fan, and right. it's been hard to watch. Right. I, I don't know enough. I like that quarterback, Taylor Heineke. Uh, <laughs> all I can say is from this is that I cannot emphasize to everyone who is watching this show enough how much influence these people have. They are mini celebrities here in DC because True. they have this town wired. They talk to every single person who matters. They use their reporting to get scoops and they drive the news cycle in a way that if you were to say of the top 15 most important people in DC, I would definitely put them in there, 100%. Yeah. Um, alongside people like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, and President Biden. I mean, 100%. they are that influential into how this town works. And I, I see our role sometimes as really trying to explain um, having been inside the system how exactly that system works to people who are watching because you're not crazy. It really is just a small group of people and those small group of people with their outsized influence, they make outsized cash. And yeah. and even us as skeptical of, yeah. as we are, we have to depend on oh, what yeah, they're doing. Oh yeah, nobody else does it. There's no other, because right. they're the ones that get the money. Yep. They're the ones that get the, the access. access. Right. So uh, we used Punchbowl in particular during the Build Back Better. Right. Because they're When right that there. was like yeah. hot and heavy. Now we're kind of like, eh, well, it's kind of stripped down to, to for parts at this point and maybe not going to pass at all. But when those when those negotiations were really hot, I mean, they had, you know, one development after another, mm -hmm. and there were very few other places where you could get that information. So what we try to do is we try to take, you know, that information and sort of question it for what their biases might be there to try to present you the closest to what's actually going on. But that's part of why they're influential is because since they do have so much money and so much access, 
there is no other option but to to use that reporting on things like that. No, it's very difficult. Uh, we try to be very transparent about that, and I always keep it in a grain of salt. I'll be like, just so you know where this is coming from. Mm -hmm. Why we try to we present try to information from all sides, but it just look. This is why it's so hard, and it's exactly because of the people who pays them. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.